Hey guys, my name is Dave and welcome to another video. So, I was watching a couple different videos on YouTube. One specific one stood out on this front. I'm not going to get too much into detail about this, but said video actually did get me thinking. Um, it started making me think about the idea that in the, in the world, and I've talked about this small aspect of it before, there are toxic people all over the place. But in the mindset of a toxic person, they're not going to think they're toxic. They're just going to think that what they're thinking is just absolutely normal, right? Well, to them, this idea was presented in one of the videos I was watching. To that, to these individuals, the toxic person, like, say to me, for example, say someone who I used to hang, who I would hang out with, or used to hang out with, blah blah, anything like that. That person was toxic, so I stopped hanging out with them. Well, the idea was that to that person, I'd be the toxic one, which was kind of an interesting idea to think about, to say the least. I, I, I when I was watching the video, I was was watching. They kind of brought up the idea. Not intentionally in any kind of way, but I started thinking, why would this be the case? As I'm like look, no. as I'm like looking through, it kind of in my mind about all the aspects of this, it actually does make some psychological sense. Um, when when you think about it, so a toxic person to one is something that damages their personal life in whatever kind of way in a way that leads them in the opposite direction that they are aiming to go in. That's which just by that ideal alone to a toxic person, the person who thinks that that individual is toxic is going to be toxic to that individual because of the fact that they're just, they've got opposite ideas. Now in the sense of having opposite ideas, it's not, it's not all the time where this causes toxicity amongst anyone. A good example of this actually would be an old friend that I used to have during high school. Um, it's someone who I actually knew before high school as well, long before. Somehow I met up with them again. I never expected it. And I did become minor friends with them. Nothing too drastic, but by the time that happened, this guy and I actually had um, ideals in two completely different directions to the point where if we were to end up hanging out, which we did like once or twice, um, arguments would happen in the sense where it was kind of like an angry debate. Um, in a way where it's like the, the ideas would be so different that the frustration would come out and those kind of arguments are usually what amongst people like that are usually what causes a lot of toxicity amongst many. A pretty good recent example amongst the internet, I would say, would be that of, um, ironically, as much as my channel covers a lot of this stuff, video games. Uh, there, a big example of what I'm talking about would be I'm gonna use the Zelda franchise for a good example because there's one specific title that has a tendency to have a lot of that towards it, and that is Skyward Sword. A lot of people would hate on it, but at the same time, an equivalent amount of people would actually enjoy it. But because people become toxic when it comes to that kind of debate towards the opposing idealist, that's where things really start to crumble. And in the case of that particular one, it was because there were certain aspects that just weren't fully looked through. Did that make it a bad experience? Not really, at least not for everyone. Um, but the amount of toxicity that went towards that did make it seem like it. Because for some reason, negative aspects have a tendency to hit the internet harder than the positive ones sometimes. But the reason I bring up this example is because I've seen people talk positively about this kind of stuff, but whenever that happens, uh, like on this platform, whenever stuff like that happens, you'll look to the comments and there'd be so much hate. It'd be like, why? Well, why, why would people 
you know, act like that would go through the mind of someone who's thinking they're just giving out their opinion. Well, it's because to those giving the hate comments, they don't think they're hating. They think they're giving, like, constructive criticism, which is not the same in any kind of way at all. But to the mind of those who think constructive criticism is giving straightforward what's usually to most would seem like negative response, when, when they get a negative reaction off of that, that's where they think, or at least in their mind, that's where they think the toxicity comes from for them. Which, it kind of brings a large loop under the idea of what a toxic person actually is. But in the long haul, that just really leaves the answer to be, it's really up to you. Um, like, for me, the kind of person I am, I'm very optimistic. It You have to do a lot of pushing to bring out pessimism in me, a lot of it. And anybody who's usually able to do that with me, those are usually toxic people for me. And that's they, these have to be the kind of people who are excessively doing it. Um, this channel has presented a couple different examples of this before. Um, not ones that I'm going to talk about, but... And, and plus, just because it was so far in the past, and there's no point in bringing it up again. To the opposing person who, you know, brought this out on me with that... Those opposing individuals would think I'm the toxic one because... It, the way things usually go with me, hypothetically, is that it's usually the reverse action ends up happening. Because when somebody pushes me to that point, they end up getting a response that they would hate. That most people would find toxic. But it's for me, it's generically just a response that... Spit on my foot, I'll spit right back at yours, kind of thing. For those who don't know why I say that, or don't understand that particular reference, it's an extremely old way of showing disrespect. It's like grinding somebody's hat, which a lot of people more accurately know about, with like a shoe. Um, but under that front, it kind of gives the idea of what I'm talking about, I suppose. Maybe it's a little bit blurred, but to a toxic person... If it's toxic to them or it's someone who greatly disagrees, then yeah, it's considered otherwise toxic to them. But no one's ever going to look at themselves as toxic, which is something that a lot of people never consider. You'll describe something that seems toxic to you, but to them, it'll be completely normal. That's kind of the weird thing about psychology and sociology. It's like, you contradict something and it'll be just, it's, it turns into like this large debate. I don't know. It's something that I've kept in mind for a while. I never really got the grounds to actually talk about it. But I guess after watching something, the thing I did earlier today kind of gave me something to go off of. Anyway, I'm going to leave this video here. So, one way or the other, what are your guys' thoughts on this kind of aspect? Like, on how toxic minds work. If you have a different... Um, hypothesis if you want to call it that or theory whatever you want to call why not let me know in the comments below if you'd like um if you did like this video though make sure to push that like button and so far you can't see it anymore and if you really liked it consider subscribing to the channel i talk about a lot of psychological stuff or philosophical depending on the day otherwise it could be some other stuff but if you want to check out any other things like that uh click the link on the side of my head um, or if that's not piquing your interest, why not click the link on the other side where YouTube will give you an idea of what you might enjoy. Not floating your boat on the other side, check out the channel itself, you might find something you like there. In the meantime though, I'm gonna head off. Thanks again for watching this video everyone, and I hope to see all of you in another. Bye for now.